نعم ونصلي على رسوله الأكرم ذي الشرف الأشم والنور الأتم والكتاب المحكم وكمال النبيين والخاتم سيدي ولد آدم الذي بشر به عيسى بن مريم ودعا لبعثته إبراهيم عليه السلام حين كان يرفع قواعد بيت الله المحرم فصلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى أتباعه خير الأمم الذين بارك الله بهم كافة الناس العرب منهم والعجم فالحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا والحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا والحمد لله الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يقول سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا أنفقوا من, من طيبات ما كسبتم ومما أخرجنا لكم من الأرض ولا تيمموا الخبيث منه تنفقون ولستم بآخذيه إلا أن تغمضوا فيه واعلموا أن الله غني حميد الشيطان يعدكم الفقر ويأمركم بالفحشاء والله يعدكم مغفرة منه وفضلا والله واسع عليم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي واللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا إله إلا الله واللهم اجعلنا من الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر أمين يا رب العالمين I'd like to first start by saying how honored I am that I have a chance to be among you and there are so many beautiful faces of Muslims that we don't know and Allah gives us an honor to see each other even if we don't get to say salam to each other here I ask Allah Azza wa Jal that He gives us the honor of saying salam to each other in a much better place in Jannah so that we get to know each other and we have all the time in the world and beyond with each other uh, What I want to speak with you about today inshaAllah in this khutbah is a couple, just two ayat from Surah Al-Baqarah. Just two ayat that belong to Surah Al-Baqarah. And everybody here I think knows Surah Al-Baqarah is the longest surah in the Quran. And Allah Azza wa Jal in these ayat, these are almost at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah. There are an, a huge number of ayat, they all have one subject and that's Al-Infaq Fi Sabilillah, spending in the path of Allah. So the, there's a, a large group of ayat and there are no other ayat in the entire Quran like these ayat on the subject of spending in the path of Allah. This is the biggest passage in the entire Quran on this subject. But the first thing I want to share with you is this is actually, a, you can think of it like an entire tree. But a tree starts with a seed. And the seed was given in the beginning of the surah. And the seed grows into a tree by the end of the surah. So in the beginning of the surah Allah said, وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ From what we provided them, they spend. From what we provided them, they spend. So this is the first seed that was planted about spending. But then Allah will give us the most comprehensive jami' guidance on spending at the end of the surah. The second seed I want to talk to you about is Allah did not only talk in the beginning about spending, but He also mentioned the story of Adam alayhi salam and Iblis in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah. And in that surah, in that story, this is actually directly connected to spending in the path of Allah and I'll try to show you how. How is, how is the story of Adam alayhi salam directly connected to spending? But first I want to tell you something about وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ I have children. And among my children, the younger ones is, you know, five years old. And I'm eating some ice cream. And when I'm eating ice cream, she comes to me and she says, Can I have some ice cream? And I say, No, it's mine. And she says, Baba, please, 
Can I have some ice cream? Just a little bit, just one little bit. And I said, no, it's mine. And then she, she says, please again. I said, okay, you can have it. Here, you can have the ice cream. And I give it to her. Ten seconds later, I say, hey, can I have some ice cream? And she says, no, it's mine. When a human being gets something, and it's in their hand, they forget that it's not theirs. Now you like the taste of it, you enjoy it, and now you start thinking that it's yours. Allah Azza wa Jal gives me, and He gives me, and He gives me, and He gives me. None of it is mine. All of it is His. لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ But you know what? I'm holding on to it for so long, when, some, when Allah asks me, can you give me? The first thought, the first thing that comes in my head, I have to give, but this is mine. This belongs to me. So we forget that it actually belongs to Allah because we love it so much. وَتُحِبُّونَ الْمَالَ حُبًّا جَمَّا You love wealth, a very strong love that seeps inside, that goes inside your heart, is very hard to pull it out. And that's the love of money that we have. And why do we have love of money? Every human being loves wealth. Every human being. It's very difficult not to love wealth. Because it's not easy to get wealth. You have to work very hard. You have to work, some people have to work in a farm. Some people have to drive a taxi 12, 13, 15 hours a day. Some people have to stand in front of the store in the heat. And they have to work. And at the end of it all, maybe they get a little bit of money. So they have to give a part of their life up to earn wealth. It's not easy to earn wealth. And so when you're spending money, it's like you spend so much time to earn it. And now you can just give it. It's not easy. It's like giving up a part of yourself. You know, this is why Allah Azza wa when He talks about people who He has given them Jannah, He says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ اشْتَرَى مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ He puts anfus and amwal, yourselves and your money. Because our money is actually an extension of ourselves. You know, we have to give up part of this life. I don't like to do work all day, but I have to do it. I gave up so much of my life so I can make a living. You know? And so this is a big sacrifice that human beings have to make, you know. And Allah Azza wa Himself even describes that this life in this world is not easy. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ We created the human being in hard work, labor. He's exhausted. Kabad is your back is bending because you're working so hard, you know. So this is, the, this is this life. So now, I mentioned this in the beginning, this is the first seed that Allah put. But the second seed that Allah put, is about Iblis in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah. And you know, Iblis is the worst enemy of, the, of humanity. Inna shaytana lakum adu. Fattakhiduhu aduwan. You know, aduwan mubeen. How many times in the Quran Allah calls him open enemy, clear enemy, he's your enemy. Don't forget he's your enemy. And then, what does shaytan do? He comes to Adam alayhi salam, who's in Jannah. And in Jannah, there are lots of trees. And the trees of Jannah, Zawata Afnan. The trees of Jannah are full of branches. They have wonderful fruit. You don't even have to climb the tree to get the fruit. The fruit comes down to you. You don't go up to the fruit. And each tree is full of greenery, mudham matan, like Allah says in Surah Al Rahman. And Adam alayhi salam is in Jannah. There is no shortage of trees. There are lots and lots and lots of trees. And Allah says, only one tree, don't go near it. Only one tree. And you know, you know, Jannatin arduha samawat wal ard. Arduha ka ardis samai wal ard. In the Quran, the size of Jannah, the size of Jannah is equal to the seven skies and the earth combined. So Jannah is much bigger than this world. It's much, much bigger. This world, this planet Earth, is this little speck in the universe. And Allah says Jannah is the, it's big, big, as big as the seven skies on this Earth. And all of it is full of trees. <laughs> all of it is full of trees. Adam alayhi salam has endless choices of trees. He could be eating from any fruit he wants, anywhere. And imagine, we don't have that. Even if you have one jungle over here somewhere, and you say, stay away from one tree. Forget about staying away from one tree. Finding that tree is hard. How are you going to find it? There's all these thousands of trees. And in Jannah, there are 
countless billions, trillions, I don't know how many trees. And each one of them have fruit. And Allah Azza wa Jal just mentioned, get, stay away from one tree. Now, but the first time Allah mentioned it, He said, هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ in Baqarah. He mentioned, هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ this tree. فَإِذَا اسْتَعْمَلْنَا هَذِهِ هَذِهِ اسْمُ الْإِشَارَةِ لِلْقَرِيبِ You use it for something that is close. So Allah brought Adam alayhi salam close to this tree and He told him this one, stay away from this one. Later on, Adam alayhi salam goes far away. He's far, he's not close to this tree. So later on, and we learn the later part of the story from Surah Al-A'raf, which is a Makki Surah. عَن تِلْكُمَ الشَّجَرَةِ تِلْكُمَ لِلْبَعِيدِ so he, Adam alayhi salam, isharatan, he used to be very far from the tree. And he made all that hijrah to come back to this tree. But why did he do it? Because even on the way, there are so many other trees, you could eat from all of them. It is one reason and one reason only, shaitan. One reason, shaitan. And shaitan is convincing him, all of these trees of Jannah have nothing like that one tree. You need that one tree. If you had that one, you will be happy. All the other ones, eh, not worth it. Now you imagine how many trees did Adam alayhi salam walk past? Only for that one. You know, the Arabs have a saying, Kullu mahroom matloob. When you don't have something, when you can't get something, you want it even more. You want it even more. Now let me come back. There are two seeds that are planted. The first seed was the seed of spending for the sake of Allah. The second seed was shaitan will put in Adam alayhi salam the desire of one thing, the one thing that he can't have. He wants to have, all of Jannah is not enough, you, need, you must have that one tree. You have to have that tree, subhanAllah. And Adam alayhi salam was then therefore the enemy of, the enemy of humanity. The thing he wants from you is greed. He wants you to be greedy. He wants me to be greedy. No matter how much you and I have, He wants us to have more. And He wants us to have more. And He wants us to have more. Until we want what Allah does not like. You can have anything you want, but no. Just like in Jannah, Allah told human beings, He made everything in this earth for you. All of it for you. And just a few things. يُحَرِّمُ عَلَيْكُمَ الْخَبَائِثِ Just a few things that are dirty, they're not good for you. Those are the only things that are haram for you. That's the only thing that's haram. What is not good for you is haram. Every other thing is tayyibat, and all of it is good, and you can have it. But what does the human being do? They only go after the khabaith. They go after what is haram. And they leave all the good things that Allah made that are halal. Now I talk to you about this, this two ayat of spending. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu People who have iman, Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Anfiqu. Spend. Spend. And then when he says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, anfiqu, he says, Bin tayyibati ma kasabtum. From the good and pure things, good and pure, of what you earned. Let me explain this to you. Allah did not say, Anfiqu min amwalikum. Spend from your money. He didn't say that. He said, spend from the good of what you earn. In other words, Allah is saying, you have to earn your money by working hard. You cannot earn your money by cheating people, by lying to people, by mistreating people. If somebody is selling fruit and they're selling bad fruit, they're not earning good money. That's not tayyibat. If somebody is fixing cars, and they just need an oil change, but they lie to the customer and they say, no, you need new transmission. Then they're, they're earning money, but it's not tayyibat. That's not tayyibat. If somebody's earning zakat, even though they don't, they don't need zakat, but they're taking zakat anyway. That's not tayyibat. In other words, the way that you make money, the way that you earn money, has to be good and clean. Has to be something Allah approves. And then you can spend. After that you should spend. The first thing we have to fix is how do we make money? How do we get our money? The earning itself should be halal. مِن طَيِّبَاتِ مَا كَسَبْتُمْ You know what happens in so many, among so many Muslims? They earn money from the haram. And they feel bad. 
And when they feel bad, they give sadaqah. So first they earn the haram, and they feel, and especially in Ramadan, and then they give sadaqah. I come from America, and alhamdulillah, we have good Muslims in America too. But you have Muslims that own a, a, a liquor store, beer, wine, you know, vodka. They sell these things, and they own the store, Muslim. And what, he, what does he do every Ramadan? Every day he sponsors iftar. Why? Because he feels like he's disobeying Allah. You know, so maybe this way he can pay the fine and go to Jannah. The only way you can pay the fine is the way you earn your money has to be clean. Then there are people who have haram business, they go to Hajj every year. They cheat people, they lie to people, they take people's money without fairness. And then they say, I will go to Hajj every year. That Hajj is no good. Haram. What he eats, what he dresses, all of it is haram. How will he be answered? If we are going to talk about spending in the path of Allah, the first thing we have to talk about is earning. Earning properly. Zakat is part step two. Sadaqah is step two. Infaq is step two. Earning is step one. That comes first. So he says, أَنْفِقُوا مِنْ طَيِّبَاتِ مَا كَسَبْتُمْ وَمِمَّا أَخْرَجْنَا لَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ And from what we brought out for you from the earth. Because what Allah brings from the earth is the fruit. He brings the vegetable. He brings the rice. He brings the plant. And he, these things are all pure. None of them are impure. You don't have an impure orange. You only have pure orange. You don't have impure rice. You only get pure rice. Because this is what Allah makes. And when Allah produces from the earth, He is teaching you, this is an ayah for you, that what you produce should also be pure. Just like the food that Allah produces is pure. You know, when human beings make food, when we make food, when we make chocolate or Pepsi or something else, there's ingredients that are good for us and ingredients that are not good for us. There's pure ingredients and there's impure ingredients. When Allah makes food for us, when Allah gives us food, when Allah gives us rice, when Allah gives us wheat, when Allah gives us apples, they're pure, they're pure. That's the risk Allah gives us. So the way that, that risk is a reminder that what you, the way you earn it should also be pure. The way in which you make it, it should also be pure, subhanAllah. So he says, وَمِمَّا أَخْرَجْنَا لَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ Now the step two. The step two is what? Spending. He says, وَلَا تَيَمَّمُ الْخَبِيثَ مِنْهُ تُنْفِقُونَ Don't take the dirty part of what you have, the ugly part of what you have, and give that in sadaqah. So you decide to give you an example, you have food at home. You have fresh food, and you have food from two days ago. Which one do you give in sadaqah? The food from two days ago. That's tunfiqun al-khabith. You have new clothes, you bought just for Eid. You bought new clothes, and you have old clothes. And somebody comes and says, I need some clothes for sadaqah. You give the old clothes. No. Allah says, don't give the old things. Don't give the dirty things. Allah doesn't need your dirty clothes and your old food. You are not giving to the faqir. You're not giving to the miskeen. You're giving to Allah. You're giving to Allah. The Sahaba, so many of the Sahaba, before they gave sadaqah, they used to put perfume on the sadaqah. They used to put perfume on the sun, and you ask why? Because I'm giving it to Allah. I should present it nicely, subhanAllah. When we give in sadaqah, when we give in faq, we are not helping poor people. We are not helping poor people. They are helping us. They are building our akhirah. They should not be saying thank you to us. We should be saying thank you to them. This is the mind of the Muslim. So he says, وَلَا تَيَمَّمُ الْخَبِيثَ مِنْهُ don't make the intention for giving the extra thing, the dirty thing. What would happen if you became poor? What would, Allah gave me the house. I didn't get the house. Allah provided the risk. Allah gave me the health. What if I didn't have the health? Allah gave me the job. What if I didn't have the job? Then the person, the guy on the street who knocked on my door, the one who was begging for food, maybe I could be that person. That could have been me. There is no reason I have and he doesn't have except the qadr of Allah. Allah decided that I should have. Allah decided that he has his own test. But if I was on the other side, if I was the one with my hand out like this, 
And we ask Allah that He provides us rizq so we never have to put our hand out for anyone. But when you have, if one day came, Allah, and you have to put your hand out, would you want to get the second hand item? Would you want to get the old food? Would you want to get the smelly clothes? The leftovers? How humiliating would that be? You wouldn't take it yourself. That's what Allah says. وَلَسْتُمْ بِآخِذِهِ إِلَّا أَن تُغْمِدُوا فِيهِ You wouldn't take it yourself. Unless you had to close your eyes and ah, ah. You'd have to take it like that. You know? And then when he, as he closes this ayah, SubhanAllah, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ You had better know Allah is not in, Allah does not need. Allah is ghani. Allah does not need your sadaqah. But I thought the faqir needs the sadaqah. And faqir yahtaj. And the ayah is about giving to the faqir. But Allah says, no, you're not giving to the faqir. You're giving to Allah. Allah is ghani. Everybody knows Allah is ghani. But at the time when you are giving sadaqah, at the time when you see someone put their hand out and you're giving to them, at that time I must remind myself, Anna Allaha ghani. At that time. At that time you don't think about the poor person, you think about Allah. You think about Allah. And you know when you give to the poor person, they say thank you. They say Jazakallahu khairan. They make dua for you. They praise you. But Allah says, Anna Allaha ghaniyun hamid. He is the one who already has hamd. He doesn't need anybody else. He's not going to be thankful to you and you don't need to, even if you don't thank him. Even if you don't thank him, he's, he has hamd already. In other words, as you are giving, as I am giving in sadaqah, number one, we remember Allah is the one that is wealthy, not me. Allah is the one that is wealthy, not me. And this poor person, this faqir, this miskeen, this sa'il, this one who is asking, they're, they're doing me a favor, I'm not doing them a favor. And when, they, when we do give, instead of looking for them to say thank you to you, you should be looking to thank Allah. You, you and I should be doing hamd of Allah. Allah changes the way we think about sadaqah. Now I told you there are two seeds. The first seed was spending. This ayah was about spending. The second ayah is about shaitan. Because shaitan, kama akhraja bawaykum min al-jannati, just like he got our father and our mother out of Jannah, now he wants us to stay out of Jannah. Now he wants us to stay out of Jannah. We're in dunya right now, but in the akhirah he does not want us to go back to our own home. That is our home. That is the home that Allah made for us. That's why he says, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْوَارِثُونَ They are going to inherit. Wiratha, inheritance, is when your father lived somewhere and you got it. That's when you get wiratha. Our father's home is in Jannah, Adam alayhi salam. Our mother's home is in Jannah, and we are going to get Jannah in Wiratha. We have to go back to our home. He does not want us to go back home. So what does he do? He uses the same attack that he used on Adam alayhi salam. The attack he used on Adam alayhi salam was greed. Do you remember all the trees, but he wants that one tree? And he says, Allah says, a shaitan in the next ayah, he says, a shaitan ya'idukum al faqr Shaitan, in fact, he is the one promising you that you will become bankrupt. You will lose all your money. Every time somebody asks, give sadaqah, give charity, give a little bit, you start thinking, but what about the groceries? What about the electricity bill? What about the gas in the car? What about the university bills? You know, what about the doctor's bills? What about this? What about that? You start doing an entire budget. In your head, you become an accountant. And you start thinking about every single expense. As soon as someone says, give for the sake of Allah, everyone becomes an accountant. But when you go to the store, and you see, oh, I want to I wanna watch a movie. Oh, I can give some 10 ringgits and watch a movie. I can. You don't become an accountant. You don't say, what about the college? What about the groceries? What about the car? What about the gas? Ah, it's just a movie, not a big deal. Let's just go. So when does it become a big deal? When you're about to give for the sake of Allah. When you're about to have a titarik, you know, when you're about to have some extra food, when you're about to go, you don't think, you just do it. You just do it. So why is it that all of a sudden you become so responsible when it comes to spending in the sake of Allah? 
Why? Allah tells you, الشيطان يعدكم الفقر Those thoughts did not come from you. Those thoughts came from shaitan. He is the one promising me and promising you will become poor, will become bankrupt. Now when you listen to shaitan a little bit, shaitan gets a little bit control. When you listen to him some more, he gets more control. You listen to him some more, he gets more control. And slowly, he is not just doing waswasa, now he controls you. The more you listen to him, the more he controls you. This is what Allah told us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, الشيطان يعيدكم الفقر وَلَمْ يَقُلْ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى يَدْعُوكُمْ إِلَى الْفَحْشَاءِ قَالْ يَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ He commands you to be shameless. He commands you to fahsha. How is shaitan commanding me? I thought shaitan can only do waswasa. Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. My slaves, Allah told shaitan, my slaves, you will not have any authority over them. You're not going to have any authority over them. So how is Allah telling me now, He will command you to do shameless things. When you listen to His promise, when you listen to His promise, then He gains control over you. And when He gains control over you, then He tells you to do the worst things. If you go back to Adam alayhi salam, once they ate from the tree because of greed, yanzi'u anhuma libasahuma. He pulled them into fahsha. He pulled their clothes off. That's what Allah says. The next step will be the worst evil and that is fahsha. So it starts with greed. And then it turns into a human being becoming shameless. Because when you think about greed, you only think about what you want. And when you think about shamelessness, you only think about what you desire. And shaitan wants you to only think about yourself. Like himself. He only thinks about himself. So he wants the human being to only think about himself. So Allah says, وَيَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ وَاللَّهُ يَعِدُكُمْ مَغْفِرَةً مِّنْهُ وَفَضْلًا I'm almost done with these ayat and we're done with the khutbah inshaAllah. And Allah, He promises you. Now, shaitan made promise, and Allah makes promise. Allah makes promise to you, مَغْفِرَةً مِنْهُ Forgiveness that comes from Him. Every time I give sadaqah, I am earning the forgiveness of Allah. I am earning kafara for a sin that I did. Not the sin that I am going to do, but the one I did in the past. If you make genuine tawbah and you give sadaqah, Allah promises forgiveness for you in this ayah. But he, not only forgiveness. If you gave a hundred, if you gave a hundred, Allah promises some forgiveness. But then there's something more. You just, you used to have two hundred in your wallet. After you gave a hundred, how much you have left? Just one hundred. Allah says, wa fadlan. Allah promises you extra. Tomorrow you will have three hundred in your wallet. Because you gave to Allah. Allah promises you extra. And he does, لم يقيد سبحانه وتعالى لم يقول في الدنيا أو في الآخرة. He didn't say he promises you extra in dunya, in this world, and he didn't say he promises you extra in the next world. Which means it is in dunya and it is in akhirah. Allah will give you more here and Allah will give you more there. والله يعدكم منه مغفرة منه وفضلا. This is why the Prophet said صلى الله عليه وسلم ما نقص مال من صدقة. Money does not decrease because of charity. When you give charity, money does not decrease. Subhanallah. This is, this is the Allah's promise. Wallahu ya'idukum minhu maghfiratan wa fadlan. And then at the end of it all, Wallahu wasi'un alim. Allah is vast. He knows everything. Why does Allah mention His vastness? Because you know, the khaza'in of Allah, the treasures of Allah, the wealth that Allah owns, maqalidu samawati wal ard, mulku samawati wal ard, you know, khaza'inu samawati wal ard, they belong to Allah. So when you ask Allah, it's very easy for Him to give you. You know, when you go to someone, you know, you go to your friend, you ask for 20, you ask for 50, you ask for 100. When you go to a millionaire, you ask for a thousand. When you go to a billionaire, you ask for maybe 10,000, a million, a hundred thousand. When you go to ask Allah, it's open. Wallahu wasi'un alim. Ask Allah. Wasalullah min fadlihi. Ask Allah from His extra. 
and he will give because his wealth never runs out. We at the end of this ayah, the most beautiful thing, it's the most beautiful thing. In the beginning of these two ayat, you are giving to the faqir. At the end of these ayat, you are the faqir. And Allah is giving to you. Allah is the one giving to you. Antumul fuqara. You're the ones that are fuqara. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us truly recognize and believe and remember that we are all faqir. We are bankrupt before Allah. That we always ask Him and out of love of Him and saving ourselves that we're able to become people of good, clean earning. That the, every penny that we earn, every ringgit that we earn, every little thing that we earn, every food, bite of food that goes in our mouth is halal. It's min tayyibati ma kasabna. That's the dua that we make, that Allah makes our income halal. And then once we make that income, that Allah does not make us greedy, that we love to give. And we love to honor those that we give to. You know, I, I know I'm, my time is up, so I'll just say one last thing about giving to people. When you give to people, show them respect. When you give to people, show them respect. Don't hand the money and say, go, 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 go. Don't do that. Don't do that. Kalla balla tukrimuna al-yateem. Allah did not say, Kalla balla tu'tuna al-yateem. He said, tukrimuna al-yateem. He didn't say, oh, you don't give to the yateem. He said, you don't honor the yateem. You don't respect the yateem. So giving is not enough. Giving is not enough. We have to honor those people, respect those people. Those people are special to Allah. They are guests of Allah. They're guests of Allah. So the way we treat the people in need, I pray that Allah Azza wa Jal makes us of those who help them, who honor them, and because we honor them, I pray that Allah Azza wa Jal provides us His endless, endless risk in this dunya and in the akhirah. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله رحمكم الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا موقوتا